It's lovely to see everyone, especially Margaret and Michael who have returned home again. And everyone is extremely welcome. It's great to be together. Today our minister Colin has taken the harvest service at Sprouston and so he will be hopefully back for the end. Um, the notices are on the sheet. Um, sadly we have three people that we know of associated with the church who passed away and we will remember them in our prayers. And there's another notice that's very important on Wednesday the church here is always open from 10 until 12. Um, and you can come in and you can have some private prayer, you can just sit quietly, or you can have a very nice socially distanced chat. But this Wednesday, it will be only open from 10 until 11. The church will be closed up at 11 o'clock because uh, Colin has to go on to now today just happens to be in the church calendar Guild Sunday. Can you remember the Guild? <laughs> it's, I think the last time we met here in Yetum was way back in February. And it seems like about 10 years ago, doesn't it? Such a long time. However, this is Guild Sunday. Guild has still been going and working um, while we've been in lockdown and over the summer. And our theme, if you can remember that far back, was about journeying, one journey in many roads, and we looked at different aspects. And this should be our third session, going the extra mile. And our worship will be centered around that this morning. And later, Susan will bring us up to date as far as she can with the given news. So, our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We gather joyfully in God's name to worship Him. Gather reverently in God's name to seek renewal. We gather full of hope, seeking God's help and kindness. And so let us worship God together. <clears throat> Our first hymn will be number 510, and we listen to Heather's playing verses 1 and verses 1 and 3. Jesus calls us. Here to meet him, and this three tells us Jesus calls us to each other. in our 
our daily lives. Not just for today, but for every day and every moment. We praise you for so many blessings received from your loving bounty. For family and friends, for the beauty of autumn at this time, for this day, and for our lives. You walk beside us each step along our journey, in the good times and the bad. Even when it is difficult to see the way ahead, you keep us steadfast in faith and hope. We are secure and blessed in your love. You have gone the extra mile to set our feet on the right road. You give us companions on the way to encourage us and to lift our hearts. And now you ask us to find ways of going the extra mile to help others. Heavenly Father, forgive us when we do not listen to your voice beside us. We want to be your servants, but we easily get distracted or wearied. We want to be kind and helpful, but so often we are self-centered. Please help us to listen to what you ask and give us the strength and wisdom to do it. And where we cannot clearly see the way ahead, grant us the grace and the courage to trust you, our guide and our help. You have given everything for us, so help us willingly to go the extra mile in your name. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, and thy capacity be saved. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, for our good. Think of baking a cake for a new family in your neighborhood 
when you know it will be appreciated. Additionally, we get the reward of knowing we have done something good for someone else. Have we really gone the extra mile, put ourselves out in any way? I think that this year in particular, many, if not all of us here in this small rural community, have gone the extra mile for our family, friends and neighbours in circumstances that have been difficult and at times stressful for us all. We are called on to journey through this life with people made in God's image and we are asked to use our time, talents and money to further God's kingdom here on earth. Whatever we do and however much effort we put into it becomes insignificant when they think of the heat, light and food that the world created by God provides for us every day of our lives. Not only that, but God has given us family, friends, neighbours, workplaces and the church, all of which are important to our health and well-being in providing all of these things. Is God going the extra mile for us, each and every one of us? The Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. We are promised that Jesus will be with us even to the end, and that when we die, he will prepare a place for us and come and show us the way there. It is amazing that anyone should do so much for us. Surely this outpouring of love from our Heavenly Father, which we have done nothing to deserve, is the definition of what going the extra mile is all about. Finally, I mentioned the Guild Project, and over the last three years they have been Faith in Young People, which is the Boys' Brigade in Scotland, SEMA's Project, the Free to Live Trust, Journeying Together, the World Mission Council, Growing the Future, Malawi Fruits, a chaplain for our ports, the Sailors' Society, and Join Up the Dots, Crossreach. Hopefully, we will be able to meet over the coming months and hear about some of the work carried out by these projects and contribute to them as we have done in the past. Thank you. This morning's readings are from, the first one is from Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 25. The parable of the Good Samaritan. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbour as yourselves. You've answered this correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbour? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of the robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he travelled, came where the man was and when he saw him, took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbour to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. And the second reading this morning is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 to 9. Chapter 4. Therefore, my brothers, you whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, that is how you should stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. I plead with Judea and I plead with Sinti to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, local yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and 
and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition. With thanksgiving, present your, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Throughout the empire. 
and at each single mile was a stone marker which pointed direction. The distance to the next town as well as to Rome itself. Hence the common phrase, all roads lead to Rome. By law, a Roman citizen or soldier could insist that a person from the conquered lands in which they were, they could compel them to carry their backpack for one mile. One can't help wonder, as Jesus was preaching the Sermon on the Mount, as he recognized this lovely saying, he goes on to say to those that are his hearers, this is required of them. But not just to go the extra mile, but go then more. The parable of the Good Samaritan, we see a man who recognized who his neighbor was and acted upon it. There are stories in the Bible where we all share the hero of the story. We go home rejoicing and what they've done that then we go back to our ordinary lives. One of these stories is the story of the Good Samaritan. The priest passes by, the Levite passes by, but the Samaritan stops, loves, heals, gives, and even goes the extra mile and says to the innkeeper, whatever else he needs, put that on my account. Jesus tells this story to show the difference between heroes and the ordinary. The difference between being religious or making a difference for God. So many of our churches are dwindling in numbers. They're looking for the next great program or new great marketing strategy to put them back over the top. But it's really simple. Become a hero. Stop passing up the opportunity to make a difference in the world. Mother Teresa once put it like this. The biggest disease today is not leprosy or cancer. It's the feeling of being uncared for or unwanted. Of being deserted and alone. The greatest evil is the lack of love and charity. And an indifference towards one's neighbor. Who may be the victim of poverty or disease, not unlike coronavirus, or exploited, and at the end of his life, left in a roadside. God loves us whole. It doesn't matter where love comes from, only that love is done. Even the meanest person has the capacity to love and to give selflessly. Simply knowing in our minds what is the right thing to do does not necessarily mean that we will do it. If we're going to be good Samaritans and to go the extra mile, then this will be more than a change of mind. It will take action. And really, that's what this parable is all about. Or as it has been said, you can give without loving, but you cannot love without giving. There have been countless acts of kindness, and Susan referred to them even in our own village with the resilience group. Many of us have experienced the kind acts of our neighbors and friends. I'm sure that as this pandemic continues, we will be those who serve those who are needy and those who receive help from those around us. As we do this, the words of Jesus will become alive in our living experience. And I'm sure we found this, all of us, in these last weeks and months that have gone. And the words that Jesus said will go and do that likewise. How reticent those words become in our day. And as again Susan reminded us that if we're going to come to the end of the <coughs> our coming or the coming, this is the last chair, I think, in the, in the strategy that they have on one journey and many roads. <coughs> the extra mile, of 
course, as the theme for the day has been pretty obvious, I think, throughout our service. All we have not been able to meet at the moment. Let us reflect as we conclude how we can go that extra mile. How we can meet our life's journey's end. All of these are things which are important as we draw our service to a conclusion. The words of the hymn that we sing, so part of those words are, oh, guide me, call me, draw me, uphold me to the end, and then in heaven receive me, my Saviour and my friend. And as we reflect how we can go that extra mile, often we say that Christ will meet us on the other side. But it's true, but never forget that he walks with us on this side and then guides us through the end. We will meet him there because we have met him here. So said Erwin Lutzer. May that be our lived experience as we continue in this week. Amen. And thanks be to God for his word.
God's compassion and mercy will bring to you the world in which we live. This our land and our community here. Especially in this COVID pandemic, be with our leaders of national and local. And may they use their powers with wisdom and justice and let your will be done. Remember our families and those we love and those on our hearts at this time and we pause to name them before God. <clears throat> and finally, loving Father, we bring to you all the work of the guilt all who work for it, and also all the work of the session's guild projects. We pray for all the staff and volunteers involved, that you would supply the strength they need for their task, the wisdom for the decisions they must make, and the compassion to work lovingly in your name. Pray to for all who will be helped by the projects so that your loving plans will bear fruit. And we commit to you all the work of Crossreach, the Boys Brigade, Malawi Fruits, Seamus Project in India, the Sailors Society in Scotland, and the World Mission Project in Zambia. Love and Lord, we offer our heartfelt prayers in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose we are and whom we serve. Please hear us and answer according to your perfect will. Amen. Find him is number six four four. Oh Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. After which Colin and Francis Cecilia's return and will close with a benediction for us.
assistance Ian will be at hand. So, could everyone please stand for a little bit? And now, go be companions of the journey. Go and walk the extra mile. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and be with all whom you love and be with all who are called to love. Now and forevermore. Amen. Please be seated.